heard this beat in my dream. What's up guys? Hope all of you are doing well. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about what I think is the best budget content creator setup of 2020. So we're going into the new year pretty soon and if you guys are looking to get into content creation or YouTube or travel videography, this is gonna be my recommendation on the gear that you guys should be buying if you're starting out. Keep in mind that with all of these tips, you guys need to think about what your style of videography and photography is and change these things just slightly to more suit exactly the type of content that you guys are interested in creating. This is what I think is best for the content that I like to create. So if you guys wanna create the exact same content as I do, you shouldn't need to change any of this, but otherwise just adapt it to suit you guys the best. Let's get into it. Okay, first thing we're gonna talk about is a camera body because surprise, surprise, you're gonna need one of those to make videos and take photos. Just before we get into the specifics of this, which is the Sony a6300, the reason I like this one is because of a few different things, but the main things being why I chose to go with the Sony over a lot of the other brands is mainly because I really like shooting a lot of my stuff in a higher frame rate so that I can really use that slow motion. The Sony's allow me to shoot in 120 FPS at 1080, which is still full HD. Not any of the other ones allow you to do that as far as I know, not within this budget range. Um, another one of the reasons why I really like this one is because it has some really awesome picture profiles like S-Log and Cine 4. The Sony a6300 is still able to shoot 4K, which is really useful. A lot of clients these days will request 4K video and this one is one of the few that does 4K and 120 FPS like we mentioned. Uh, it's super small and lightweight, so if you guys are more into travel stuff, this one is gonna be a huge like space and weight saver. It's tiny, this thing is tiny, dude. A couple of other things I really like, it has a microphone input, so if you guys are gonna be doing vlogging, it's really important to be using a microphone and not just using the internal sound. This has a microphone input. If you guys are looking at the A6000, just be aware that that one doesn't have a microphone input. And for that reason alone, I would say the A6300 is a better option. If you guys are looking to pick one of these up, you can find one used for like $300. And if you want to get a new one, it's not even much more expensive than that. So with all of that being said, if I was looking at a really budget option going into 2020, even though this is an old camera, this is the one I would go for. If you have a little bit more budget, you can look at the A6500 or even the A6600, but those are gonna be quite a lot more expensive, so it just depends on your budget and how much money you have to spend on the body. Little interesting story about this very camera, the Sony A6300, is this is the camera I've been using to shoot pretty much everything that I've been shooting right up until very recently when I upgraded to the Sony A7 III which I only did because I was in the position to. I really didn't need to. I was completely satisfied with this camera, even shooting huge professional gigs and shooting with a lot of professional clients. Not once did I ever have a complaint about quality of video or the quality of the content that I was producing. And for that reason, this camera, it's such a beast, guys. You can do anything with this. You can have a full production company with this little cheap, cheap camera. So, Sony A6300, couldn't recommend it enough. The next thing we're gonna be talking about is lenses. And just like the camera body, it's important to think about the style of videos that you're gonna be making when deciding on what lens to get. The first lens that we're gonna be talking about is actually just the kit lens that comes with the Sony A6300 and the 6000 series. These kit lenses get a lot of hate, as do all kit lenses. They're not the best lenses, they're not the sharpest, and they're not the fastest. But if this is all you can get, you can still get amazing content with just this little kit lens that comes with the 6000 series. So don't judge it too quickly. If this is all you can get, it's gonna be completely fine. The kit lens that comes with the 6000 series is a 16 to 50 variable aperture of 3.5 to 5.6. So it's not very fast, and for you guys that aren't sure about what that means, it's just basically how open the aperture can get and how bright the shots are gonna be, which is also gonna affect the bokeh or that blurry background in the back of your shots that make them look really nice and cinematic. 
If that's something that you guys are really trying to achieve and something that's really important to you guys, maybe the kit lens is not the best option and I'm gonna show you a couple of other lenses that might be better at achieving that look. But if you want a good all round lens, I wouldn't throw this one under the bus too quickly. It's not as bad as you might think. The next lens we're gonna talk about and if you guys can only get one lens, I would recommend getting this. This is a Sony 18 to 105 fixed f4 lens. It's a G Master lens, and in my opinion, this is probably the best Sony lens for crop sensor cameras out there. This is my favorite lens, and the lens I use 80% of the time when I was shooting on the Sony a6300. This lens is basically just like a really killer replacement lens for that kit lens we just mentioned. Um, it's got that whole focal range in it, but it's way way sharper It has a fixed f4 So even once you all the way zoomed into 105 millimeters You're still gonna be on that f4 and using both of those settings means you're gonna be able to get quite a blurry background and that bokeh Which a lot of people are after if you're gonna get one lens This is the lens to get and you can pick one of these up for relatively cheap I believe around three or four hundred dollars maybe even less if you get used so Sony 18 to 105, couldn't re recommend this one enough. Another lens that we're gonna mention is this Sony 35 millimeter 1.8. The reason this lens is really nice is because like the other lenses, it's also really cheap and I think this is the cheapest out of all of them, coming in about $300 or less. This lens is gonna be great if you guys are gonna be focusing more on portrait photography or street photography or something like that. And the reason is because this is a prime lens. This is the first prime lens that we're gonna be showing. And it's a 35 millimeter focal length, which means it's really nice and flattering for shooting portraits. And it doesn't give too much distortion on people's faces or anything like that. And the other reason is because it's a 1.8. So it's gonna be quite a fast lens and you're gonna be able to get a blurry background and it's gonna look really nice with that bokeh and it's gonna be pretty good in low light with that f1.8. So killer lens, really love this one too. Okay, the fourth and final lens that we're gonna be talking about, I'm actually using right now to shoot this video so I'm not gonna be able to show you guys, but it's a Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4. This lens is fast becoming one of my favorite crop sensor lenses for Sony cameras. This lens is really cool because it gives you that wide look, but it still has a really fast aperture. So even at that wide focal range, you can get a blurry background, which is absolutely amazing. And there's no other lens that I know of on the market that can do that. Um, it's also pretty cheap coming in at about three or $400. If you guys are wanting to get into vlogging with this lens, it's an absolutely amazing lens because of how wide it is and when you're holding out your camera in front of you, it's a really good range to get a nice vlogging style shot. But something important to note is that it doesn't have image stabilization and neither does the A6300 camera body that we were speaking about. So if you guys are looking to pair those two things together, just be aware that you might get some of those micro jitters when you're doing handheld shots and stuff like that. One workaround of that is if you guys have a little bit more budget and you can get the A6500, that one has in-body image stabilization and that's gonna take away those micro jitters. Now that you have your camera body and lens set up, the next thing we're gonna be talking about is something that's hugely overlooked, especially by beginner filmmakers these days and that is sound and audio. So the next product we're gonna be talking about for your setup is gonna be a microphone. And the specific one we're talking about is the Rode Video Micro. There's a couple of reasons that I like this microphone the most. Uh, number one is obviously that it's gonna give you really good sound and it's a really small form factor, a lot smaller than the other microphones that you get. And the second thing is that it's cheaper than the other ones. This one comes in at about $80, which is super inexpensive. And probably the thing that will affect the quality and the level of professionalism in your videos the most for the least amount of money. Another thing that I really love about this microphone in particular is that there's no on off switch on the microphone. If it's plugged in, it's auto turned on and it's gonna be recording through it. Something about a few of the other ones is that there's an on off switch and sooner or later it's bound to happen that you forget to turn on that microphone. You film a whole video like this or something to get home and realize that the audio wasn't recording the whole time. It's happened to me before and for that reason alone, this microphone is the one that I would recommend. I'm gonna show you guys a quick little demonstration of what it sounds like with and without this microphone. So check this out. This is me talking with the microphone, the same as the rest of this video. I've been using it the whole time. And this is gonna be without the microphone and using the internal sound of the Sony camera. 
So hopefully you guys can notice a big difference. This shouldn't sound nearly as good. You should be picking up a lot of the other background noise and not nearly as rich of a sound of my voice. Okay, and this is back with the Rode Video Micro. Hopefully this sounds a lot better. And hopefully I've convinced you guys to spend a little bit of money on that microphone. It's gonna make a huge difference. At this point, when you have your camera body, a decent lens or maybe a few of the lenses and a microphone, I would say bare minimum, you're good to go. You can go out and shoot some really awesome content with just these things. And if you add up all of these prices, this is gonna come in at way less than a thousand dollars for this entire setup. And that is a pretty budget setup for what is a really professional looking setup. So if you guys are just looking for the absolute essentials and you're on a really tight budget, this is gonna be where I would say you guys can end. Take this, go work on your skills, land a couple of video gigs and slowly get better and better, save up a bit more money and eventually you can buy some of the next things. If you guys already have all of these things or you have a little bit more of a budget, I have a couple more things that can take your videos to the next level. So I'm gonna show you guys those now. Let's get into it. Okay, so moving on, the first non-essential but very helpful piece of gear that we're gonna talk about is stabilizers. There's a lot of different options for this. My personal favorites, this Joby Gorilla Pod. Depending on what you're gonna be doing and what kind of content you're gonna be creating, there's gonna be a couple different options for you. But this Joby Gorilla Pod is really great for vlogging, as I'm sure all of you know, Casey and I start style, like holding this thing out in front of you with the camera, filming yourself. If you're gonna be doing other filming of yourself, this thing is really useful. You can put it down somewhere and talk to the camera, or you can hook it on something and balance it somewhere. It's really useful when you have this thing on your camera. It is also gonna add a little bit to the stabilization just because if you have your camera alone and you're just holding your camera like this, it's quite a small thing and it's quite easy to move. Once you add some weight to it, it just makes it a little bit less bouncy and like moving around easy. It takes away a lot of that small micro jitter and it just adds more weight and places for you to spread out your grip and get more stable shots. So, this really helps with stability. It's not only like a tripod or to hold out and do vlogging style stuff. Really useful and really affordable. I highly recommend checking out one of these. If you guys are interested in shooting more cinematic style videos and maybe a little bit less focused on vlog style content and filming yourself, then I would recommend getting a gimbal. And the one that I would personally recommend is this one. This is my favorite one from Zion Tech and it is the Weeble Lab. Uh, a couple of reasons why I really like this one is because it has a really cool unique form factor uh, with this thing and you can put the handle on here. It's really small but you can still put on a big heavy setup with big heavy lenses and this one is really affordable. So this is going to be for the people that are looking to get more like cinematic style shots. You want to really get like movement in your shots and get like some crazy cool looking stuff. Having a gimbal can make an amateur's footage look almost professional kind of instantly. You can put your camera on this and give it to a complete novice and they can run around filming stuff and purely because of how perfectly smooth the footage ends up, it looks so much better and so much more professional. So if you guys are in the position to get some sort of gimbal, I highly recommend getting a gimbal. It's gonna completely transform your videos and take them to that next level. So check out the Weeble. Uh, interesting little side note is that Zion did just come out with the new Weeble S, which I actually have a video coming out really soon on. But this one is also completely amazing. So next thing. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna be talking about is a variable ND filter. And the only one I have with me right now is actually on the camera. So I'm gonna take it off. And if you wanna readjust your exposure. Okay, so variable NDs are pretty much like sunglasses for your camera. I've done some videos on this in the past. If you wanna check them out, I will link one up above. But basically the idea of this is that it's sunglasses for your camera and you can change your exposure using this ND filter. So if you have a really fast lens, like some of the ones we mentioned earlier, that 35 1.8 or the Sigma 16 f 1.4, which is the one we're shooting on now, you're gonna need one of these if you're shooting in broad daylight. Because something about shooting video that you guys might not know about is that you wanna try and shoot your shutter speed at double your frame rate so that you're getting the right amount of motion blur in your shots. The only way that you're gonna do that with a fast lens shooting at a shallow aperture is by having this ND filter so that you can put those sunglasses on your lens and compensate and then get the correct shutter speed. Another thing that this is gonna allow you to do 
is to open up that aperture on those fast lenses all the way and take full advantage of getting that blurry background and shooting at a shallow depth of field. So without this, you're gonna struggle with that. Uh, this particular one that I'm talking about is from a company called Thai Photo. Very inexpensive, if I'm not mistaken. This particular one was about $40 and it's really high quality. I made a whole video on this one, which is also linked over there if you wanna check it out. Really cool ND filter. Another little pro tip I wanted to give to you guys before we end on this one is if you have multiple lenses with different filter thread sizes on them, the trick is to get your variable ND in the biggest filter thread out of all your lenses and then you can get step down rings so you can have one ND filter that will use all your lenses instead of having to buy like a whole bunch of different ND filters. So that is going to be it. ND filter makes a huge difference. That is going to be it for my recommendations of the best content creator budget setup, even going into 2020. If you guys want to check out any of the products that I mentioned in this video, they will all be linked down below in the description. And by clicking on those links, you help me out anyway. So go check them out. If you guys are looking to get into content creation coming up in the new year, I hope some of these things helped you. And I hope it gives you a little bit of a better understanding on what gear might be best for you. Just remember that these are my personal favorites and they might not necessarily be the best fit for the content that you guys are trying to create. So keep in mind what type of content that you guys are looking to actually produce and maybe you can slightly adapt these things to suit your needs perfectly. If you guys are looking to make the content that I kind of make, this is what I would recommend getting. That's gonna be it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like. If you wanna see more videos and if you're not subscribed already, smash that subscribe button and I will see you guys next week in the next video. Peace.